Just because I love you, it don't mean I trust you. Everybody not to be trusted. Everybody around me thugging. Everybody around me drugging. Everybody around me hustling. Everybody know not to bring no new in around me. They say I be bugging. Got racks in the go yard luggage. Just because I love you, it don't mean I trust you. Everybody. Not What's up, everybody? Welcome to the podcast. It's another episode of Uncut with Q, and I have a repeat guest on the podcast today. If this is your first time listening, all I ask is that if you get value from this show, that you share. Um, and you know, share it with a friend. Don't just share it with your audience or share the link on your story. Like really like send it to somebody that you're close to. I always feel that we build this show the best when it's done off of word of mouth. So if you gain value from this show, please, please, please share it. So with that being said, we're going to be talking about a lot of different things today, but I promise you it's going to be a valuable one. So stay until the end. I have a really awesome guest with me today. Go ahead and introduce yourself again. It's me again, Elirena Rojas. Um, yeah, we're going to have a lot of things going on here. I think we're both ADHD, so we're going to be switching all over the place. <laughs> but, we, I mean, ADHD people are very smart. Yeah, we are. So, and we got a lot of information to share. So we put pieces together. Yeah. I think that that's the gift. The, the gift is your, your mind. To me, I always notice my mind works like a robot. It's always trying to find the next solution, the next step. It's always working as a robot because ADHD, you're all over the place. Yep. So I have to put my phone on D&D because of, I already know if we keep this going, I'm like going to keep going back and forth between like different things that I have going on. Because while I'm here with you, I just got done selling somebody a 50,000 package in data. I just put a property under contract on the south side of San Antonio. I got mm -hmm. a contractor that is trying to get paid. He's going to swing by the office after work to come here. And then I have your podcast trying. and then coaching calls. Well, yeah, because, <laughs> you know, he wants me to uh, direct deposit, but I do everything by check. Yeah. So I have the tax, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I always tell him to just come to my office. The, the, the job isn't even that far from here either, like a solid 10 minute drive. But mm -hmm. he has things going on. So he's just going to come and see me when he's done with the job. It's yeah. a small job. You know, I got I got a lot of different projects going on. But ADHD really helps me with getting that going. While I'm here with you, I'm also content planning. I'm pinching through content that I feel that we should be posting. I have my admin here, Paul Loma. She helps me out with posting all of my content mm -hmm. on social across all the relevant platforms. And I mean, I'll be honest, you know, it's a it's it's a lot to stay on top of things when you myself. have that ADHD. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, wow. take notes all the time. I mean, I literally put some notes down here that I wanted to like, don't forget, Ali, you want to talk about this. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Yeah. I use my watch to, to schedule reminders. So I'll tell like, hey, Siri. And then I'll just tell it to remind me of something that I if need. If I don't have my glasses on, I can't see my watch. So, <laughs> Where but, are your glasses? It's over there. Oh, okay, cool. So, yeah, we're running this <laughs> blind. I can see you here. We're, uh, we're, we're running this, um, you know. I, I'm like, blind, dude. Head. I got, like, my left eye is completely oh. shot. Like, I can't even see anything through it. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah before I got here, I was at a property, you know, looking at it because I'm going to put it for sale next week. Mm -hmm. They're just putting new electrical in it. and um, But I did a recording there about permits, so... I'm going to post that probably, you know, you're going to see this after I post it. So <laughs> you'll just see it. It'll be on my YouTube channel. We'll One of the things that I love about following you, because I've been following you for so long and it's so cool that you and I, I mean, we talk behind the scenes a lot. You know, uh, mm -hmm. Ellie is a very seasoned real estate investor. She's been in the game for a long time, mm -hmm. but you know, it's crazy. So like I brought her up to my mom because I was so impressed with you. So I told my mom, I said like, dude, I know this chick, she's killing it in real estate. And I keep telling my mom she needs to do a career shift because you know, she's been in property management for a long time you know mm -hmm. she's in her mid 50s already so she's like wanting to do something different for the remainder before she gets into retirement and mm -hmm. stuff you know like yeah i pay my mom every month i have my yeah. mom on my salary and i love my, my mom, mom money too. i love my mom like you know like she raised me my dad was not present for me during like the time of me growing up so i gave a lot of what i have been able to accomplish in my life to my mom mm -hmm. and so i told my mom about you and she had already known who you were she yeah. says she's been following you since like MySpace. Is that true? Yeah. Have you been documenting I mean, since then? I've been talking. Yes. Yeah, so I tell a lot of people because this one guy is like, well, they just want to be they just follow you because you're pretty. I said, I'm sure people are not going to follow me because I'm pretty since MySpace. I have people on my on all my social media who have been following me since MySpace. You have to have something to say. Yep. You're only pretty for so long and then you're boring. You know, you got to have something that they want to follow and see. And I've been through shit and you know, I've been up up and downs you know and i'm barely coming back again you already know from the depression and i do want to mention that this month because may is um mental health awareness month mental so health awareness. make sure you find someone that you think or make sure you're kind to people and if you haven't reached out to your family members reach out to them check give on them, your love give ones. them a hug tell them you love them because you never know when people are down because people do not talk about it yeah it's not common they stay at home and they don't talk about it 
and it's all right to talk about it y'all like mm -hmm. don't ever man if there's anybody that's listening to this i pray that god gives you the courage to reach out to somebody that you love if you're going through it yeah you know and yeah. and don't be ashamed dude like mm -hmm. i've gone through it ellie's gone through it if you guys listen to our last podcast which i highly recommend it's episode i believe 76 on my platform mm -hmm. and uh Dude, I mean, we really, uh, we wore our hearts on our sleeves on that one, mm -hmm. but that also got a lot of notoriety. I want, I watched, I mean, you sent me over every positive review that you yeah. got from friends of yours and mm -hmm. your platform, because I know you shared it on your YouTube and yeah. you also shared it on social media, on, on everything. I still have to get the other, you need to, I guess after this, because again, we're all over the place. I don't know where I'm looking at. Am I looking at you? Or You're looking camera? at me or that camera's you. This oh, one's okay. mine. Hi. <laughs> um, so yeah, cause me and him, we have been talking, but we're all over the place. So I'll send them a, I'll send them a property, but he's already doing something else, I guess. And he was supposed to send me the link so that I can get all the podcast links so I can just post up the podcast in one place and then it goes everywhere. Oh, I'm still yeah. waiting for that link from him. Ugh, that's but, right. But I don't, I, I relate with him. I understand because I get real, I get, I'm all over the place too. So I, I get that. For sure. But you definitely, you know, give me a kick every now and then about it. It's okay <laughs> yeah. though. You know, yeah. you, you deserve uh, clean communication. So yeah. I try to get back to you as soon as and, I can every time. He's younger than me, like, like 20, almost 20 years younger than me. So he's going to know a lot more about tech than I do because I'm not from the, uh, I'm not from the generation of tech. Tech came into my life when I was about 29 years old. Mm -hmm. So, um, tech has, uh, been in my kids' lives all their all their lives, so everybody sees technology differently. That's kind of like what we're going to talk about today. Yep. Because um, I know that, like, especially being like in that time frame, you know, we're talking like beepers to the T9 system on a phone. Mm -hmm. Like, if I wanted to send somebody a text message back then, I would have to get on my phone and I'd have to literally press about 30 different buttons to tell somebody, hey, what are you doing? Yeah. You know, and nowadays you get like a keyboard on your phone, you get the internet on your phone. You didn't have that. Imagine what, you know, and AI is just so advanced. Like yeah. that, that's a, another new thing. So me, I, I want to learn everything that you know. And my son knows. And my, oh my God, makes the most awesome videos, my daughter on TikTok. Oh, she's great. And then when I start looking at it and reading about it, I'm like, oh, this is too much stuff. I don't want to learn no more stuff, but I know that I need to get with the time. It's, it's important, so I'm trying. You what know? I always love, though, is that you're so consistent. Yeah. That's the thing. And even if you're trying and you're watching this and you might not know what to post and my, maybe you were from that same demographic, you know what I'm saying? Where that age demographic where you were born between 70 and 80, there's still like if there's one thing that I've learned from meeting people from that demographic is that consistency is like a big deal. You know what I'm saying? There is an 80 year old woman on TikTok. I follow her. I love her so much. And she's always talking about her boyfriend. And first when I started following her, she's like, I don't want a boyfriend. Everybody has my boyfriend. And now she has a boyfriend. Um, she has 4.4 million followers. Wow. And she's consistent on TikTok. Now she's, she has a YouTube too. I mean, not YouTube, uh, Instagram. She probably even has a YouTube. But she now I noticed the last few months, she also has um, deals with big products like a, like a, say a soap product or something. So she's promoting products now. So this woman is really capitalizing. So no one is ever too old to get into the game of social media. This is, this is the future. A this is, a, this is the future. There, yeah. There's no other thing, especially with AI now. AI is going to make it a lot easier. It is. Back in the day, guys, the, the way that it was done, you know, if you wanted to get a message out there, you would, you would have some type of marketing company or some type of postcard or some type of mm -hmm. post in the back of a newspaper or some form of catalog or something. And, or you just cold called, you know? Yeah, and I, so I like you had news press, you had, you had things you had to pay for thousands of dollars to be able to get a message out there. And nowadays we're so intertwined it's and connected. Advertising. You really don't have to have any of those things. You can go on Facebook, create an account right now, wrap your friends list up to 5,000, start posting short form content mm -hmm. and boom, you have a platform. And I know you think it's hard to build your following. Um, and it, it is, it's, it really yeah. is hard to build your following, but it's not going to grow if you're not posting. Yep. If you're not posting the things that people want to see too. Um, it's just, um, I got lost in my things, but you have to post every day. You have to be real. You have to be unique. You can't go on social media and think that everybody's going to follow you. If you're this clean cut person, do you know how many realtors are out there, especially in San Antonio? And his mom knows me. Yeah. Yeah. I, because I'm not, I, I'm not going to even say the name because I'll get in so much trouble. There's a certain group of realtors that I've been following since I started real estate and they all look the same. 
Mm -hmm. They dress the same, they look the same, the whole office has the same appearance. I would not be able to choose between which realtor in that office I would want to use because there's no uniqueness to them. So I have never had a hard time getting clients, no matter what I post on Facebook. It could be the craziest, outrageous thing. But you gotta remember, we are still dealing in a world of social media which has millions and millions of people. And in those millions and millions of people, those people, there's a certain amount of people that like my crazy, outrageous things and they want to buy from me because mm -hmm. they like me, my personality, who I am. They don't just buy from you because you're a realtor. They buy from you because they like you. They want to yeah. work with you. They like your personality. They like that you're funny. They like your political views. You got to be, you got to stand out. You can't just be the same typical cookie cut realtor. Yep. One of the things that I love about what Ellie posts on her social media is she documents her story. A lot mm -hmm. of it is just stuff that you got going on right now, you know? Mm -hmm. And I remember the other day you were talking about the chicken farm that you got in your backyard. And I was just like, wow. <laughs> you know, I just thought that that was so that amazing. Is, that one got, like, I told my, I told my daughter, because this is actually a new TikTok. I just started, like, in October. Yeah. And I none of my videos have reached beyond 3,000 views on um, TikTok. That one just went crazy and it has, it went, it got 15,000 views, That's good. you know, That's and it really was good. about my chickens. But again, it's something unique and different. It's something it that, is. you know, that people are, people want to have chickens, you know, you can have chickens in the city. It's real, it shows yeah. who you are as a person. It also shows how you grew up. Remember mm -hmm. when I went to your house and we, uh, what you told me to grab the chicken, right? And I, yeah. I was afraid he to grab it. He was scared it. to grab, it was a baby chicken. It was hilarious. He was oh like, my God. I was like, it's, it's a baby chicken. It's not gonna do nothing to you. Yeah, I, I <laughs> but was he's a so city, scared. He's a city guy, you know? Oh no, I'm not, okay, yeah, just a little bit. Yes, but yes. yes. I, I barely knew in the country stuff. I barely started fishing, barely started like really taking it seriously with guns and then learning how to put things together so like i mean i spent the most like majority of my life just trying to figure out how to get money out of the way you know yeah. that was my thing and so i've just been so fat for so long you know mm -hmm. like now having the way i weigh like 200 pounds less than what i used to i just want to give it my all you know so yeah. like i want to be that country dude still you know and i know he was always there it was just under 200 pounds of fat as well yeah. was what it was you know but I, you know, it was just what, what I love about that, though, is that, again, like most people, they think, well, what am I going to post about? Dude, you're Everything. in your backyard posting about chickens mm -hmm. and how many people like can relate to you in that aspect. Yeah. That's the reality. Relatability <laughs> d eliminates debatability. People won't debate with you if they can relate with you. And that was yeah. something that I learned posting content because yeah. I've got business. You, you heard me on a call when you came in. Mm -hmm. Right. And so like Ellie and I, we were chilling before the, the, the podcast and I was on a coaching call. This guy has been following me for five years before mm -hmm. he bought into anything I had to sell. So he just signed up for a data package from me and my CRM. And so literally from one person who's been following me for a long time has been resonating with my content, messaged me on Instagram, said, dude, you inspire me. I want to get more serious about real estate, had budgeted and put money aside. And I'm be making $197 off of this relationship every single month, plus whatever he uses by using the platform, plus whatever data he wants to buy. So that's like a, a passive income stream that's built through a relationship through a social media follower that has been involved with my journey for the last five years. And it took him five years to really understand, is this guy real? Is yep. he not? Not everybody's going to come to you in the, the minute and believe who you are. It's it's so easy to look at social media and you're wondering, is this person real? Is there, Are they fake? Yep. It's so easy to judge people too. And the weirdest thing is a lot of the people that are the realest are the ones that are accused of being fake. The ones who really are out there to help people that really care about people, those are the people that are being targeted because they're like, ah, oh, there she is trying to post another positive post it it's it's who we are yeah where, i mean there's actually good people out there you have to believe that and um if we're, I, I i like i said the last podcast if you watch it i post for myself too i'm not just posting for other people sometimes i need to read the words that i'm posting for other people to 100. read i want to share my pain and the things i'm using to help me with that pain that i'm going through and so this whole thing is about how to build your social media. So basically yeah. what we're trying to say is be if you want be to be, build your social media and today it's time, and I want to say this really fast, if you're in the corporate world or you're employed at 95, not everything that we're suggesting is for you. Yeah. You cannot use these techniques, especially if you're in the corporate world and you're just starting. If After you're already established, you can. But the corporate world will look at everything that you post and you may not get a job. 
me and him are in a different world. We're self-employed, and it's important for people to like our lifestyle, our personality, and what we have to offer. That's how we attract people. But in the corporate world, you are working under the boss. And if the boss doesn't like something you say, you can lose your job. So mm -hmm. first, establish yourself in the corporate world. Get to a place where you're securing your position, and then you can be whatever you want to be. But what me and him are suggesting are for people who want to build their social media followers because they want to be creators or have their own business. And they need that following because you can't sell anything if you don't have people on your social media. Yeah. And, so. and don't be afraid either, man. Like if you're starting out and you like if you have if you have a cell phone in your hands, and you can afford this thing. You mm -hmm. can afford to spend some time not just indulging in drama and all the BS that you see and all this rap beef that's going on between Drake and J. Cole and yeah. Metro Boomin. What? You know, oh it, there's a lot of stuff. J. Lo right now and you Ben see, and most people oh. they consume, they don't produce. Yeah. That's the reality, man. And so if you're just on this thing and you're scrolling and scrolling, you ain't using it right, man. Mm -hmm. If you got a device in your hand and you're watching this or you're listening to this podcast from anywhere in the world, the reality is, is you got everything you need in the palm of your hands to start a brand and a business today. You don't mm -hmm. even need a product. You're the product. And so that, I think and that that's that, been the again, most beautiful thing I've learned. Looks. It doesn't have to do with clothing. It doesn't have to do... Yes, some of us, you know, I love dressing up. He, he, sometimes he's in his workout clothes when he's doing his podcast. All the time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it doesn't matter. There are, this is, I'm not trying to be mean or anything, but I can go, I literally go on a TikTok and I also follow a lady that has no teeth. Like she has no teeth. She, she looks like she may be a crackhead, but I don't know who she is. But she knows that people think that she looks like that. So she goes through like how she puts her teeth in and how she does her makeup. And you're like, is that the same woman that I saw that has her jaws in and she looks or because she knew how to do her makeup. It doesn't matter who you are or how you look. Yeah. You can build a following on social media and people will look at you and follow you. If you have some kind of unique thing and that is very unique, this woman has a huge following because people are like freaking out at how she changes her look with no teeth and the fake teeth. I'm just giving you an example. Yep. Anybody can do this. You just have to be consistent. That's where it starts, you know, and mm -hmm. I think anybody who's listening to this, if, if there's any advice that I can give you to start, pick a platform and run with it. Mm -hmm. Like, don't try to just do all of it at one time, start with one and then build the next one after, but get to yourself to a point where you learn one platform, you learn the algorithm, you learn the, the hashtags, you learn how to start a video, how to attract the attention. One of the best pieces of advice that I ever received, because I used to go to social media masterminds all the time was your first five seconds buys the attention of the next five seconds. Mm. And so like, you gotta start and start big. You know what I mean? Like. I did a video one time. It was just like, it's let me show the you the hook. The hook, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. You gotta set the hook, just like when you're fishing. Yeah. And you know, I would start a video like this. I said, this is how you can buy a house using no money, just right off of the rip. And that mm -hmm. was just like, what? No money, like at all? Like, how would you be able to do that? And then that was my hook. I, I did one time where I was talking about I bought this property from a crackhead who convinced a hooker to sign documentation for him. And that was like the hook. And once you got into that, that video got a little over 5 million views. I popped off on 20,000 uh, 20, followers in just that one video. And, you know, just like telling people stuff from experience. But just think about the first five seconds, no matter what, when you start your content and you start really getting it going, you know, your first five seconds of what you say gets you your next five seconds. That's and when you become a little bit more seasoned. But yeah. like for me, we I just went live. We don't. I, I don't suggest you start with the podcast because it would be kind of hard to start with the podcast if you have no followers. That's true. I mean, you want to start Build with the following small first. Small clips of things that you're doing. Small things. So, like for instance, on um, TikTok, <clears throat> I know everybody thinks it may go away. I'm praying it doesn't. But there's a place called. There's another app called Clapper. And there's another one that they're coming out with. Let's pray to TikTok doesn't go away, but they have now where you can do like short story clips. So you can, you know, start there, post things, and then you can do like a series, series one, series two, and just like two to three minutes of a short clip of what you want to share, but make sure that, that those first seconds of that clip draw people into the story and they're going to want to keep on following your story. And I'm going to start doing that when I go to Greece. That's I wanted to wait to Greece, and now I'm going to start doing my short story on, on TikTok about my life because my life is very interesting, and my parents made met in a very interesting way. And 
and I'm gonna let you know because I want you to look. But my parents, my mom and dad met when my mom was 13 years old and my dad was 19. My dad met my grandmother at a bar. Wow. My dad dated my grandmother, and then he took my mom. Wow. But and I, I can see the pedophile thing, but I see it in a different way. My mother was raised in a very abusive home, and she was abused many times by the men that my mom brought into the home. My dad took her away from that environment and gave her a better life. So I am grateful for that, that meeting, but that's just the beginning of the story that I'm gonna be telling, because it's very interesting. Because my yeah. mom didn't speak Spanish. My dad didn't speak English. My mom got pregnant at 13, had my sister yeah. at 14. Mm -hmm. Like we, I mean, and her, her dude that she was with was already in his 30s. Oh, yeah. You know, back then, though, it was a different time. It was a different time. It we, was a different you know, time. We didn't see. And they, I mean, they had to mature earlier because their lives were a lot harder than our lives, you know. For sure. Now we're able to keep our children youth for longer. Like my son literally just got his driver license and he's 18. But I was like, I'm not going to rush him to be an adult. There's no need to rush him to be an adult because they need to. They, they It's so limited amount of time that we're able to be innocent. Yeah. You know, and um and so I appreciate that change in our life, that our children are able to have innocence a little bit longer, you know. If it means anything, I didn't get my driver's license until I was 26. No. But I've been driving <laughs> without it since I was 14. So I had all these tickets racked up from being a teenager yeah. that bled into me being an adult. So, I mean, I used to steal cars and drive them, and that yeah. was like a thing. And then I steal my mom's car all the time. So See, I didn't have that problem with my son. He's, he's a good kid. He's yeah, a good that's a kid. great thing, though. Yeah. And you're right about the being youthful thing. Yeah. He, he lives in a digital era yeah. where everything can just be delivered to your door and it's mm -hmm. convenience you know and he does he orders his, his people don't watch movie stars online. the way that we used to when mm -hmm. i grew up in the 90s i wanted to be like Arnold they Schwarzenegger. choose what they want to watch this is yeah. what i was telling him when telling him when we were talking we're going to talk about this subject and social media and all that stuff i'm from a generation where we didn't have social media literally i had to i had maybe a hundred phone numbers saved in my head <laughs> now <laughs> i have zero phone numbers saved in my head and it's sad my kids are like you don't even know my number my kids know my number but i'm just like i'm it's so easy just to get it on, yeah. on the phone. Um, so, and then, so his, and then it's his generation and now it's my son's generation. And it's like in his generation, there's the generation of social media and they do like to post and all that stuff. But it's weird because now the third generation which my son's generation, they're not all about posting. They're good about doing things live and ha talking to community people, communicating with people live, Yeah. but they don't want their digital footprint to be on, online forever so they, they're not okay with doing podcasts now some people are but a lot of them are because they're they're getting hit with information as we are learning that we shouldn't have said that mm -hmm. and it's crazy to think about it you know like the access that people have nowadays mm -hmm. just being from home like when i got a chance to um just look at how do I say like, uh, like, like, look at how kids are seeing life nowadays. Yeah. Being a parent, you get to see things through their eyes. And so like my son's eight now and he's been he's watching be things. He's going to be the generation of AI. Literally. And, and I love this too. But he told me like when I grew up, when, when I was a kid, you know, I didn't get introduced to social media until I was 19. I didn't even have my first cell phone until I was 20 and I had, was able to afford it. You know, I, yeah. until then I had like just a black book with phone numbers in it. And yeah. I, I would go to pay phones to call people, you know, and yeah. I was drug dealing at the time. So I was also like, I didn't want people to know where I was and I didn't trust burner phone numbers. Mm -hmm. The first phone that I ever got, first phone line I ever got was at the company called Pocket and Pocket ended up getting bought out by Cricket in like 2010. Yeah, and so that that was my first phone. It was a flip phone, still had T9 system on it. It was blue and gray. I never forget it. But like even in MySpace, you know, I only had access to MySpace because I had a computer. And I so love like, MySpace. I did too. I love the I love customization the colors, of it. The music and all that stuff. We all became computer Everybody hackers. Everybody wanted on us it. to be mature. Let's go to Facebook. Yeah, Facebook was cool though. I, I appreciated what I learned on Facebook because 2010, 2011 is when I started posting content. Like content like funny stuff. Mm -hmm. That's what I started out with, with humor. Yeah. And then my real estate journey started coming along when I was about in my mid twenties. And then from there, that's when I started documenting everything that I was doing. You know, the place I got my most business for when it comes to real estate, um, and this was a different account that got taken away from me because of We Buy Ugly Homes. They were, you know, they were jealous of my, my, what I was doing. I don't know what somebody here in San Antonio, but I, I did hashtag <laughs> we buy ugly homes, not knowing that they were going to consider that as a trademark. Um, and it wasn't even the real people. Like I called the people in Dallas. It was, um, um, 
what are the people that are under attorney franchise uh, uh, what no. under the Copyright attorney attorneys now um, no um it was a legal paralegal team? it was paralegal. a paralegal wow. for for one of the we buy ugly home people in san antonio that wrote instagram and, and said that i was copying them or something like that when i wrote the people in dallas they gave me my account back but it was too late i lost it Instagram, I used to get so much business for real estate and investment properties because they allowed you to do like a scope of area that you wanted. So I would do like a certain area code and I would target like 20,000 people in that area code. And I always got hits on Instagram. I haven't had the, um, the um, motivation to restart that because that was so much work that I lost, yeah. you know, uh, until recently. Now I'm going to start doing it again and start building back up. But it's it's a lot of work to build up your content so people it can is. start having informative information. And I had a whole lot of great information about real estate from appraisals to everything that I was doing. And it's gone. I mean, it's on YouTube. But for some reason, my YouTube never had that kind of reach that Instagram had. This is uh, this is a lesson that I had learned the hard way too, because I had lost a platform as well. Mm -hmm. I'd lost my original Instagram account and then I had to rebuild on the second one. Yeah. Is that while you're in the process of using these social media platforms to build your platform, don't forget that it is not your platform. Yeah. They are giving you that voice and mm -hmm. they can take it away. Yeah. And so in the, that notion, make sure that you have your backend system as well for people to opt in. So like I warehouse a little over 300,000 phone numbers, full names, last names, emails, and, and these are all people that have opted into the things that I've sold in the past. Mm -hmm. Whether you've followed me because of e-commerce or real estate or uh, public speaking or, any of the various products or affiliate companies that I've been a part of, I have this massive database of people. So in the event that any of these platforms goes down, I still have my platform. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I have my own websites with my own forums and my own things like this podcast. You can follow this podcast on QuintonFlores.com. Literally. Yeah. So my whole name is a website. Yeah, I have EllieRainerRojas.com, but it's not developed yet again because I... I'm not sure if real estate is going to be my only thing, you know. Your like, brand is. My brand is Ellie Reina Rojas, and yeah. so that's why I I got that. But I I want I really want to go into writing. We talked about that last time. I want yeah. to write. I want to tell story. I want to be a storyteller. I'm a very good storyteller. You are. And I have a lot of things that I want to say. So that is what I want to do. Now, knowing how to uh, make money with that, capitalize that. I, I'm still very naive about that. I can help but you I'm with learning. that. I'm learning. I'm learning. This resources. Because I, 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 the little bit that I send out to people to listen to, I, I didn't send you to you yet, but I already did like the first intro of my first my story. It was only, it's only two minutes, and everybody's like, "Yes, I want to hear more." So I'm going to, and I gave you a little bit about the intro about my mom and dad, but I, I love it. My, I lived in a, I lived in a house that was haunted in Detroit. My house, you know, Detroit was here before Texas, you know, like so crazy. the development of the houses. My house was probably, it's probably 300 years old now wow. that I lived in. Yeah, that is haunted for yeah. sure. Yeah. So we definitely had a, a, a ghost in our house. There's a lot of stories that I have to tell. I'm excited to hear them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and this is the thing. Like, you've been sending me properties and stuff. We flip a few houses together. I'll do mm -hmm. all of your production stuff for free, man. Yeah. Like, legit. I'll say that on a public platform. I don't mind. And, yeah. I, and I love helping, you know. Like, for me, and, and, and like, I've been so blessed to, to get to this point brand-wise. And, you know, I think that um, as you begin building your brand, other business opportunities that aren't even... Now, I'm not going to say that they weren't in alignment, but they're just different they're than what you want. they going to follow your lap. Exactly. The, better, the bigger you build your followers, they're going to follow you up. I already told you about the 80-year-old 80, the 80 -year -old woman. Yeah. She, does, she didn't know. She does not know how social media works. She just started using it. Yeah. And, and the, the, the way that TikTok works, no other social media works like them because for some reason, their algorithm throws your stuff out there. And sometimes you're on... The for 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 you page. Yeah, exactly. And it's random. You're one day you're, you're on the for you page, and all of a sudden you have four million likes Views, on that likes, one everything. view. No other no other platform has been able to find that type of algorithm, and this is why this woman is doing so well. So it doesn't it doesn't matter. You just have to put things out there and pray that your video is going to hit yep. that day. What I've come to realize, and this is from my journey into YouTube, so. You know, it's funny because I helped a friend of mine, Sergio and Adrian Baron. They have a company. I'm actually repping their stuff right now. It's Faded Culture. So they didn't start with a clothing line. They started out during COVID. 
I remember Adrian told me and he would cut my hair. He said, Q, I'm going to start a YouTube channel. And I was like, bro, you guys are the most talented barbers in San Antonio that I know of. I think I've seen it then. Next to my friend, Cherry, you know, because Cherry, the barber, she's also a really good friend of mine. I actually went to elementary with her. I met her in kindergarten. She's one of my oldest friends. I love Cherry. And Cherry always talks very, very highly of of, of Adrian and, and Sergio, too. So, like, it's a triangle of people that I know in the barber industry. But I remember Adrian telling me he was going to start a YouTube channel. And I had bought a course for that because I built my YouTube channel from 2016 to 2020. And I remember the whole world shut down. So they were still cutting hair. I had to wear yeah. my mask when I go get a haircut. Yeah. And so he was like, we're going to start it. We're going to do a video. We're going to talk about how to cut your own hair during COVID. I've seen a, I'm seeing a lot of um, hairstylists start start yeah. podcasts and videos of cutting hair and all that it's stuff. It's crazy. So but Sergio, that is the future, people. So the way that they did it, they took that course, learned and applied it. They're at almost a million subscribers on YouTube awesome. now, and they make probably passively a solid $100,000 a month. Mm-hmm. And they they launched a clothing line and a product line for barbers. And you on know? YouTube, if you agree, they'll add advertising to your video. So they make money so off the video. So you'll make money from the advertising that people watch, the little clips of the advertising on there. But what I was saying about the 80-year-old woman, again, she didn't know what she was doing. She became very famous, and the products came to her. She wouldn't have known how to get any products to promote and all that. They just found, they saw this woman and they say that she's hitting it on TikTok and they're like, I want her. So she's, now she's promoting products. That could be you, but it's not going to happen unless you post. You can't be scared of what people are going to think. People are going to talk about people all the time. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't. But you know, one thing I like about TikTok too, TikTok told me the other day, Ellie, We hid a comment from you because it looked like they were bullying you. Oh, wow. There you go. And yes, and that other platforms, they They don't don't notice that. that. Not right away anyway. Yeah, yeah. they they don't. So that's another. TikTok does protect you from bullies as well. So they'll hide it and you have to approve it. I wanted to ask you, how do you deal with haters on social media? Okay. Maybe in my 30s, it hurt me because I, again, I'm from a different time. Yeah. So... Like you pull up to their house, right? Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, we're, yeah. We talk. I, I. Well, I mean, I'm from the, I'm from the streets in Detroit, you know. Yeah. So like, if I had a fight with some, I, I'm not. I brought the, I brought the streets to Texas because I obviously had fights through 11th grade. I was yeah. suspended all the time. But um, when social media came, it was, it would be a, a girlfriend of mine. So I was like, oh, do you know? I saw somebody post this about you online. It was kind of like TMZ kind of stuff, you know, oh, God. for San Antonio, you know. <laughs> and I'm like, why are you the, always the first person to tell me about something that's been posted online? I come to find out it was her. One, she's one of the girls that was posting bad things about you. So if somebody comes to you and tells you somebody's talking about you, better believe they're probably involved in it too. Yep. You know, because people that are busy, they don't have time for gossip. But back in the time when it first started, yeah, it hurt me. But now I'm going to be 51 this month. There's a transition that happens, and you're not going to know it. I'm telling you, you will not. You can pretend you're going to know it. Your mom's going to tell you the same thing. There's a a reality that comes to you when you turn 50, and you know that life is so limited. I don't fucking care anymore. Mm. They can say whatever they want about me. I do not care anymore. And that is free publicity. And not only that, we're in a time where we've gone through 20 years of people bullying each other on social media. People know that the bully is a person who's hating. People know that the bully is a person who's hurting. People know that the bully is a problem. It's not the person they're talking about. So usually people these days, since we're in a new time, usually your friends know that the bully is telling a lie. So I really don't care. They're wasting their time bullying because most people don't care anymore about bullies. So, yeah. So those two those two aspects. I'm 50. I don't care anymore. And social media has evolved. People have been dealing with bullies for a long time that most of the people on social media don't care anymore either. So yeah. just be who you are. People are not going to like you or they're going to like you. It doesn't matter. But they're going to be drawn to you if you're real. They're not going to stay with you if you're being protective of everything you say and your image. Nobody's gonna follow a perfect person. They're just not going to follow a person. I'm not perfect and people know that. He's not perfect and people know that. Mm -hmm. But if I came in here and I was perfect all the time, everything was perfect, my hair was perfect, everything was perfect, people are gonna be bored by that. They They want real life situations. They wanna see somebody who came from nothing to something or somebody who is actually wealthy but did something great in the world. 
and still made mistakes. You know, oh, he used to do drugs, you know, whatever. Yeah. They they want real stuff because More that's that's real life. You know, so be vulnerable, be real. Yeah. Because I'm telling you, the people on social media will know if you're being fake. They do will. Do you think that social media has amplified your businesses in other places? Um like made them more money? I, I I don't have to work so hard for business though. I mean, most of my business is referral business. I've been doing it for 25 years. So like, I mean, there's days where I'm like, oh, I don't have no business. But then a previous client said, hey, I just referred my niece to you. She wants to buy a house. Or you just sold this investment house for me uh, two months, two, a year ago. I have another house at my, my um, family members dealing with and everybody's, you know, they, now they know they need to agree for me to help them because mm -hmm. if they don't agree, I have to go through a lot more to get an investment house. If your family members don't agree, that's going to cost you money. If you all just agree to sell the house, we can save you money to get that house sold. We don't need an attorney. We don't need all that stuff, but you got to agree. So yeah, I get people that just, you know, from referrals. Yeah. I'm actually using my social media for a different purpose though. And, and I've been building it all these years because I knew that one day I wanted to write a book and do storytelling. That has always been my goal. Yeah. I got into real estate because it was a way to be able to be a full-time mom and make good money and give my my kids a middle-class, good middle-class life, you know? Yes. Um, and it can even be upper-class. Me, the reason why I'm kind of still middle-class, I make six figures, I'm great, is because I am the parent who gave my kids everything, you know? I probably spoiled them a little bit too much. The money that I could have been using for investments, I you know I gave my kids everything. So it's a beautiful thing. So now that they're grown, and um, I think yeah, the children now, are I think my time to become very wealthy is now. You know, it's going to start now. There's no better investment than investing in your children. I always yeah. say that. You know, like invest the time, everything that you can, and and just like like for me, being a dad is the most important thing in my life. Mm -hmm. I would. I, I would drop my businesses to spend time with him, you know, and, and that's the reality of it. I got into business so that I would never miss a single day in his in his life, especially yeah. these days that are very important to him. And he's kind of he's going to probably be like my son. So my other kids, one of them is an entrepreneur. The other one works for corporate. And I have a son that we don't really talk very much because our views are extremely different. He was raised by his dad, which is okay, but he's still very successful. So I'm very proud of him. He has his own business in Houston. So all our kids turned out just fine. Um, but they were raised by two parents that are entrepreneurs. So only one ended up working for someone and the other three are gonna be self-employed. So if you know my youngest son, he already told me he tried Bill Miller's, he's like, mom, I don't want to work for anybody. I'm not working for no $15 an hour. He's like, I'm worth more than that. So he's actually at one of my clients' house. We just talked about earlier. He's painting the house right now. He wants his own business. He wants to do real estate investments. But how do you learn it? You have to work in the houses too. Do some work in the houses and learn how to. Because if you hire somebody and you don't know that they did the floor job wrong because you didn't choose to learn how they do that job, you're going to lose money. I know electrical, I know plumbing, I know flooring, I know how it's supposed to be done and the steps is supposed to happen first when you're supposed to paint, when you're supposed to put the floor down. Obviously, you're not going to put your floor down before you paint. You want to paint first and then you put your floor down because yeah. you want to put paint all over, all over the place. So that my son is in that transition right now where he's learning how to put a house together. I think it's great though. You teach yeah. them from experience. Mm -hmm. Most people try to rely on like an education system or like a school system to teach mm -hmm. their kids. You say you want to learn in real estate, then just get There's into it. There's nothing wrong with having both um, because again, knowledge is power, learning every way. But overall, I, I'm okay with my kids going to college, but I do know street smarts will always be 100. book smarts. Because book smarts is so limited. You're learning how to do things structurally. And street smarts, you have to keep an open mind. You have to be creative. You have to. And so street smarts is always going to be, it's always going to outweigh book smarts. But I always wanted my kids to have both, but they never require it to it. So I have some kids who have college, some Leo, he's only going to do two years. He's going into real estate investment. There's just no need to go to eight years of college for real estate investments. But my daughter who's in the corporate world, she has a master's degree, you know, and she's probably going to be and have a couple million dollars in the bank by the time she's 28 because she's in a very big 
position. She's an actuary. She has to analyze businesses, mm. find out what's happening with those businesses. That's so cool. And stuff. So, yeah, so she's, she's going to be a millionaire in a whole different way than, than my son, you know. And I love it. You know, I think that every, I mean, even you can give your child the vision, but they're still going to take it in their own right. Mm -hmm. You know, like, um, I mean, I grew up watching people around me that I love work hard. So I always just knew working hard was going to get me somewhere, but I wanted to work hard and drive it into something different. I'm probably the only one in my family that was ever an entrepreneur. Yeah. And I brought my, my, my family with me. So like my big brother, like he led my office for three years to multiple six figure months in the mm -hmm. business that we had never seen before money like that. And then getting to a point where when it, it was this time and he came of age, uh, my previous wife, um, we, um, she had told me that her little brother was doing bad. He dropped out of school. His mom pulled him out of school when he was 15. Mm -hmm. and then he turned 16. He started at my office immediately when he turned 16 years old and he started cold calling. He flipped his first house within literally like three or four months of being under my wing. And he made 10 grand on that property and I fucking broke him off with four and the rest came to the company so we could find more deals. Yeah. My little brother flipped his first house with me two months into the business and he made 10 grand. It was a $20,000 deal. And we split it 50 50. And I'm not going to be a party people here, but I want to tell the crew reality of it. If you're not consistent with your business, the money is not going to keep flowing. Yep. So he could have taught, he could have taught them everything they needed to know. But if they didn't continue doing the things he taught him, they're going to, they're not going to keep the money. Real estate is extremely hard. People it make is. it look easy and it's not easy. And if you're not saving for the hard times, then that's why 80% of realtors drop out of the business. They drop out because right now we're in a hard time. Why am I still moving? Because I chose to learn a different thing every time. So I know wholesaling, I know flipping. You know how to build a I, brand, you know how to do I, social media. I should be doing consulting, you know? Um, but again, this is the first time in my life that I finally have some freedom to think about all the things that I want to do because I spent a lot of time being a mom. Yeah. And I'm just surviving, you know? So and, and gathering knowledge that eventually I'm going to be using. But please don't think that him t teaching his nephew, teaching his brother and then because th their success is his success yeah. because he taught them. I if did. they didn't take that and on their own and continue doing it, then they're not making the money that they made the first two times. And if you make ten thousand dollars, doesn't mean you spend that ten thousand dollars on an expensive purse or something yeah, like that, you know, bullshit. your job is to take what you need to pay your bills and take the rest and reinvestment, reinvest mm -hmm. it in something else. And that's what I'm teaching my son um, to reinvest whatever he makes, because right now he has me. He's not worried about a lot of bills and all that stuff. So like if you want something, you have something to pay, fine. But you, a certain percentage has to go into savings. A certain percentage has to go into reinvesting. Yeah. So there's things that you need to know, because I don't want you guys to think that it's easy. I actually a few years ago, I don't know if you were saying, I was training people how to wholesale. I was taking them physically in my car and they were going out there and we were driving for dollars. And in front of my face, they were doing very well. But when I sent them out there to do it by themselves, one person to this day still does it. One person. And wow. that's a hundred people that I trained. A hundred. Mm. That's when I learned, even from real estate, when I first started real estate, even in regular real estate, don't assume that somebody who has a hundred agents in their office, a big century to on a Remax office, that every agent's doing well. It takes a hundred agents to find one agent that works 100. as good as you. That's how hard it is. That's real. That's mm -hmm. real. Ellie, I got to go ahead and land the plane on this podcast, yeah. but this was been, <laughs> we went all over. Yes. <laughs> and I love doing it. all over the place. No, it's my favorite though, you know, and, and I think that, that what people should get out of the value from like the value that I think people should get out of this podcast is number one, start where you're at. You don't need a lot to get a social media following mm -hmm. going. No matter how old you are, man, whether you're an 80 year old woman that's watching this or you're in your fifties and you maybe you're my age, I don't know. Right. If you got a phone in your hands, all you got to do is be consistent and start posting. Don't think about what content that needs to be posted. Just document where you're at. Tell your story. That's how you mm -hmm. do it, you know? And and for the ones that are, like, dealing with haters and stuff like that, if that's in the back of your bone, then maybe social media ain't for you. You should just get a job. If it bothers you, haters, then this is not for you. It's not. Yeah. And it's sad because it's like, you know, um, it, it isn't for everybody. What we mm -hmm. do is not for everybody. You know, and like what she had mentioned earlier, you know, my little brothers, they're not doing real estate anymore. Mm -hmm. My little brother got a job working at a, uh, fat, not a, at a at a ramen restaurant. He's one of the top servers there. Mm -hmm. He took the sales skills and he makes probably damn near three, four hundred dollars a day mm -hmm. on just tips. 
My other little brother started a lawn care business, but he also works for a construction company doing what his dad did. You know, so, so like he's still trying to be self employed, still trying. but it wasn't real, real estate wasn't the nece necessary for him. But it he was a stepping stone sets. to get where he was at. Uh, one other thing before we end it yes, you can be and do whatever you want on social media, but please, please make sure you know what's in your background, what's on your floor, and all that stuff. Because don't have dirty underwear on the floor. I mean, it doesn't matter if you have in a poor home or a rich home, you still can create good content and still be very real, but pay attention that what is in the background or on the ground on your floor because you <laughs> don't want that. I, you just don't want that on your video. Yep. Everything else, be real about it. Be but real. make sure you're, 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 you're aware of your surroundings. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Guys, make yeah. sure you follow Ellie on all of her social media platforms. I'll post them in the comments section below. I'll see Thank you guys. You. On the next one. Let's get it. I want to check. Oh, oh. check. Oh.